before we get started, I want to go back to this slide, the first slide that we covered in our class and try to remember what I said about deep learning in general. So deep learning is mostly being pushed forward by computer scientists. And there is a reason for that. The way a computer scientist think is that there is a source code, you compile your source code, and then you get an executable code in the end. So you get a program or a plugin that they can actually maybe put it on your browser. And then that plugin is identifying images for you, for instance, or is translating from one language to the other, or is converting speech to text, etc. But then for deep learning and for some of the problems, writing a hand design code is very complicated. Like what I, what I just explained, take a speech and convert it to text or take a look at an image and say what's inside that image so these are really complicated tasks for uh, for anybody to write a source code of that task so the source code is going to be your data and deep learning is just an algorithm that writes an algorithm so it's a compiler so i want to emphasize this the source code is your data so any bugs that are in your data are gonna get carried over to your executable code in the end. If your source code, basically your data is racist, there is bias, there is bias towards a particular gender, like there are more images of male compared to female in your data, then uh, through the compiler, it's gonna get translated to your executable code. So your executable code is gonna have the same bias, the same bug, basically. So last night, I was reading a very nice report and I got really excited about it because it's going to help me prove a point. So you know about CIFAR 10 and CIFAR 100. So these are the authors of tiny images and CIFAR 10 and CIFAR 100 are subsets of that data. And that data is taken down on June 29th because the data apparently had some derogatory terms as their categories and some offensive images. But then they go on to say that they had an automated data collection procedure. So they were just downloading data from WordNet actually for their labels, for their categories. And the other problem with that data is that it's 30 by 32 pixels. So it's very hard for humans to see with naked eyes what is actually that image representing. But what's the take home message here? If your data is sexist, your algorithm is going to end up being sexist. If your data has any other bias, your algorithm is going to have that bias that comes out of deep learning. If your algorithm, if your data is racist, then your deep learning algorithm is going to be racist as well. And any other sort of bias is going to get carried over to your data, to your algorithm. So this is something to keep in mind. Yes, we cover algorithms. They are exciting. We have fun doing our algorithmic designs, but in the end, the data matters. Any questions? And there is actually a nice field uh, these days that, it, that is coming up, and that's about bias in deep learning and how to avoid it and how to mitigate it. Any questions, any comments, any feedback? I'm not sure about actual CIFAR 10 and CIFAR 100 to have problems or no, but it's probably the case that they might be contaminated as well. Okay, there is another lesson from the first slide. And the lesson is, in the end, you want to end up with an executable code. And that executable code is the model that you actually want to deploy. You want to put it on your homepage. You want to put it on your website. Have you guys, do you guys know about Amazon Go? No. Nope. I think they have a branch in, uh, in San Francisco. And the other branch might be in New York. And once you enter the shop, you just scan your phone, you go in there, you take whatever you want, and then you go out. And then your cell phone and your bank account is gonna get charged accordingly. So that's one application of computer vision. So they have to detect you, they have to detect the object. Once they detect the object, they know the price and the rest of it is nice algorithms and putting it into practice, okay? So in the end, you're gonna have a deployable model that you want to actually deploy in practice. That deployable model needs to run fast. If you have a real-time video, then uh, that image classifier or object detector and basically your convolutional neural networks, they have to act really fast. They have to act in real time. 
because the final aim is that you want to have a deployable model. You want to deploy that model on your cell phone. You want to deploy that model on a drone. You want to deploy your algorithm, whatever that comes out of the deep learning framework, on a robot. And they have to be able to act fast. Yes, you are going to train them on powerful GPUs. But in the end, these models need to be deployed on, I don't know, an FPGA or a CPU or even uh, smaller size GPUs. And now that we are on the same page, you know why small networks matter. By small, perhaps a better word would have been efficient, but then there is a paper called efficient net. I didn't want you to confuse that everything is about that efficient net. Uh, so it's about networks being small for you to be able to deploy them on less powerful computing resources. Are there any other advantages of small networks? Can you say better things about their, their properties in general? There are two things by small. What do I mean by small? One is computational wise. So they, they need to be fast and agile. So they need to be efficient in terms of floating point operations. The other aspect is that they need to have reasonable memory footprint. They shouldn't be giant models, too much parameters, etc. Okay, but there, there, there are better uh convergence properties or anything like that? I'm not sure about convergence properties, and you need to take this into account. Now we are doing a multi-objective optimization. One of our objective is to get our networks to be as accurate as possible. The other objective is now we want them to be efficient. Whenever you have a multi-objective op optimization, you are going to have a Pareto frontier. So there is no unique solution, but there is actually a curve of possible solution, and there is a trade-off between how accurate you want your model to be and how computationally expensive you want it to be. So you, we need to balance that trade-off. So does that answer your question? Uh, a little bit, yeah, I think so. In terms of convergence, I think that was your question. Are they better at converging? There are multiple ways to design smaller networks, and I'm gonna tell you representative papers of doing that. One of them is that you have a large model and you try to distill the knowledge in your large model in a smaller one. There are some model pruning, uh, weight pruning, et cetera. The other trend is to start with a small network and train it. So I guess your question might be relevant to that type of networks. Yeah, I think so. But that's not the only way of doing it. Okay. And the message that I want you to take home from this series of lectures, I guess, in the next couple of weeks, is that there are multiple ways of doing it, but the final aim is to deploy your neural network model and try to actually use it. So how many of you know about IoT, Internet of Things? So yes, the idea is that you're gonna have a lot of things and those things, whatever that's moving or even is static, like controlling the temperature at your home or motion detectors at your home, all of them are gonna be smart in the future and I guess the future is very close. And most of these are going to be small objects and they're going to be connected to an internet and then our internet is going to explode in terms of the size, etc. It's not only human that are connected to the internet, but our cars are going to be connected to the internet. Our motion detectors at home are going to be connected to the internet. And all of it is about these small devices being smart. And by smart, there is a neural network behind the scene. And those networks need to be small. So in academia, this is one thing that people usually neglect about deep learning, is that in the end, the objective is to actually deploy your networks. That's why it, ma it matters that your networks are small. 